Okay, so review about absolute value. The first thing we want to think about is that absolute value is always positive. Who remembers why absolute value is always positive? Wait, because it's just um, the, like this, you know, like how far the number is from zero? Yeah, it's because it is the distance, let's make these two bullet points, from zero. Who's a football fan? No. Nope. Okay, I like, there's a visual in football that really works well with absolute values. So even if you're not a huge football fan, who's watched football before? Okay, and when they're making plays in football, they're trying to gain at least how many yards? Ten. Ten. Oh, and what, what do they measure them with? Yards. Yards. There's, there's like the chain, right? And the chain has like one big thing, and then there's a 10 yard chain, and then there's another big thing. And if you look at that, that's like the absolute value symbol, isn't it? Yes. Okay, does it matter where on the field they started? No. It's always measuring for that 10. It's measuring the distance, right? It's a related idea in my head because I see those giant things that hold the chain as looking like absolute value and what are those two things doing? They're looking for distance. Same thing absolute value is doing except for us. Well, like the line of scrimmage is like zero. It's on a number line. And yeah, basically the line of scrimmage changes to zero each time, right? Because they're trying oh, to shoot. hopefully they don't want to go negative, but it does happen. So zero is really important with absolute value. And we can have absolute value that looks negative or we can have absolute value that looks positive. But this is where negative three would be. And the absolute value of negative three is going to be its distance. That's why the absolute value symbol is what it is, because we're looking for that distance from zero. And if we have the absolute value of four, Its distance from zero happens to be on the positive side of the number line, but both of those were just measuring the distance from zero. When we're dealing with equations, though, it's going to be a little bit different from that. So let's start down here with some examples that are like the work you guys are going to be doing today. If I have the absolute value of x and it's equal to 4, now is when we're kind of reversing our thinking because there's two values that could be true about this. What's in the absolute value for x could be positive 4, but it could also be negative 4 because we're looking at the distance from 0 and we know it's four places from zero. What we aren't sure of is if it's negative or positive. positive. So the answer to this is that x is negative four and four. Both of those would make it true. So what you guys came into algebra knowing is that absolute value is always positive because it's measuring distance from zero. Mm -hmm. When we're solving equations, here's the new rule. With equations, oops, I'm starting to write the E with the with. <laughs> with equations, absolute value always I should say usually. I always get nervous saying always, because there's always something that tells me I'm wrong. Really, usually has two answers. For that same reason, because we're looking at that distance from zero. If I told you guys that the absolute value of x was 7, 
the two possibilities would be negative seven and seven, right? They're both the same distance from zero. But you're not gonna get a whole bunch of problems like that because that would be way too easy. Oh, man. Problems Yay. instead look more like this. What do you notice about that four? It's in front of the absolute value symbol. Now, I want you guys to think back to PEMDAS. You were told parentheses for PEMDAS, right? Yeah. But that P really shouldn't be a P. It should be a G for grouping symbols. Because we have multiple grouping symbols in math. Here's a little side, yeah. Here's a little side note. When you think P for PEMDAS, you think parentheses, yeah. but we have other symbols. Absolute value symbols work as a grouping symbol. Yeah. Brackets work as a grouping symbol. Yeah. All of the same things that are true about parentheses work with these. Yeah. So I heard somebody already say, when I see this, I could be thinking distributive property because that four is being multiplied by what's in the absolute value. But we don't want to distribute because we really want to just get the x by itself, which means I can divide by it. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. This four over four is gonna end up going to an invisible one. That means on the left side of our equation, we're just left with the absolute value of x plus two is now equal to six. We're gonna have how many answers to this? Two. two, and there's two ways to do it. Way one is to take this absolute value and we're gonna pull the stuff in the absolute value out and we're gonna say that it's equal to negative six. And over here, we're gonna pull what's in the absolute value out, and we're gonna say that it's equal to positive six. Sometimes the math is not about the answer, it's about the process. So, I'm going to now simplify these two to get my two possible answers. I'm going to subtract two from both sides, and I get x is equal to negative 8. And then I'm also going to subtract x from both sides over here, or not x, two from both sides. And I'm going to get x is equal to 4. So let's go back and visualize this. If I put negative 8 in this absolute value, negative 8 plus 2 would be negative 6. Yes. Negative 6 absolute value is 6. That's how we check these. I can go back to this point where it's simplified and I can try negative 8 plus 2 does it equal 6? Yes. Or I could take this solution and put it in for the x. 4 plus 2 does it equal 6? Yeah. This is going to be the absolute value of negative 6. Does that equal 6? Yeah, because absolute value of negative 6 is going to be 6. six. Absolute value of 6, does that equal 6? That's how we check. I'm going to give you two problems I want you to try on page 22, and we will come back in a moment and check them. Okay. What if you have Oh, thank you. The absolute value of x plus 7 multiplied by 3 equal to 24 
And then we also have the absolute value of x minus 3 equals 4. Thank you.